All right, Friday forecast time. It's first place Nebraska at first place Purdue in a Big Ten West showdown in the seventh week of the season. How about this coming at you? Sean, let's first close the book on Rutgers. How big will that be for momentum moving forward? Well, win's a win, and, you know, Nebraska, you can't really be too picky if you're Nebraska mm -hmm. right now. They didn't play well, and they figured out a way to win on the road against Rutgers, who had their backs against the wall, and they ended up firing their offensive coordinator after the loss <laughs> to Nebraska. Um, so, the, I mean, there were a lot of positives. Obviously, a lot of questions about offensive line and, and just maybe the overall flow of the offense itself with that defense. Even without Quentin Newsom and Luke Reimer for parts of that second half, um, they looked really good um, holding Rutgers scoreless for the entire second half. Yeah, second straight game they've done that, holding the opponent scoreless in the second half. But you mentioned two big question marks going into Purdue, two key guys on that defense in Reimer and Newsom. What do you think is going to happen? How do you think this week is going to play out? I think both will travel. I think both uh, will be evaluated during mm -hmm. the game time. I'm pretty optimistic we will see Reimer. Um, I, I, I think – I lean that way with with Newsom, but those are that's a more nagging injury. Mm -hmm. uh, but from what I know, I, I do think both are going to travel, and I, I think we, if I had to bet money, R Reimer is the one I think we will see. And pr this is an interesting game because Purdue's top two running backs are already out, um, and they're not a running team, uh, so it's going to be a different game. A lot of short passes, a lot of space plays. And, you know, you're, you're going to need all, all your guys on that back seven ready to go. Aiden O'Connell is the quarterback, back for his 15th year in uh, West Lafayette. <laughs> but seriously, I think he's a six-year senior. He's been around. He's already played in Nebraska a handful of times. Um, he's a terrific quarterback and an experienced one at that. Uh, what do you expect out of the, the signal caller for the Boilermakers? Yeah, last year, Aiden O'Connell against Nebraska, everything he did was short and underneath, but it was all just dead-on accurate. Um, he hardly had any throws over 20 yards in that game a year ago. So uh, he killed Nebraska with little four- to seven-yard throws the entire game. He kind of said, if Eric Shenander is going to give me that, I'm just going to keep taking it, and he did. And that was a very frustrating game, if you remember, last year because Nebraska, it felt like they should have won that game mm -hmm. here, and, and they couldn't stop Aiden O'Connell because he was just red hot. So they've got to figure out a way to disrupt him. Now, he doesn't have David Bell. Um, he, he doesn't have a Rondell Moore from a couple years ago. So that they don't have near the playmakers. And Charlie Jones, the Iowa transfer, he's, he's been banged he's up. He's been right? banged up. Yeah. And he really only only plays on Saturdays. He hardly practices during the week. He's kind of an old six-year senior mm -hmm. guy, too, that mm -hmm. they just say go out there and play on Saturdays. And um, so they, they've hobbled through things. And they've been schedule tested. Look, you, mean you, go to, you go to Syracuse. They've played at Maryland. They've played at Minnesota. So they've, they've really – played a tough schedule up to this point. Yeah, they back-to-back -back wins at Minnesota and at Maryland to get to this point. You mentioned the receivers. Bain Durham is their next leading receiver. The tight 28, end. 28 grabs for 280 and three touchdowns. So, yeah, he's a big target as well. All right, let's flip the sides of the ball. And, you know, offensive line was a big topic conversation earlier in the week here in Lincoln. How do they keep Casey Thompson upright? He took some shots in Piscataway. They got to run the ball better. Um, last week, Anthony Grant only had 47 yards rushing at Rutgers. And 45 of those 47 yards came after contact, meaning there wasn't much there. Right. <laughs> he right. didn't have very many clean lanes. Mm -hmm. I mean, he scraped the car every every time he carried the ball, um, and, and it, it wasn't pretty. I mean, those that was a very tough 47 yards. There, there were a lot of running backs that that might have been 27 yards, and he got 47 out of that. So uh, they've got to figure out a way to get Grant going, and and they're beating the they're beating that kid up. I mean, he's taken a beating last month. Uh, for Nebraska, uh, but if they can get him going, that's going to help Casey Thompson. But when it's an obvious passing down, I mean, there people are blitzing the house mm -hmm. on this offensive Pinning line. their ears back. I mean, yep. it, you know, there were 38 dropbacks for Casey Thompson last week. He was pressured on 26 of the 38, and only on 11 of those 38 was there a blitz. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, Mickey Joseph saying earlier in the week that even Gabe Irvin, who has really made himself into the backup, he could, wasn't available at Rutgers because of a nagging toe injury. So that means Jacquez Yant got some of the reps. It's, it's really what we thought was such a busy, crowded room and how are you going to spread the carries? Now clears it's out. like it clears out pretty quickly. But at wide receiver, you know, that's been one of the big bright spots. Trey Palmer in particular, he was fantastic again in Pis Piscataway, getting that big touchdown to turn the tide and give them the Huskers a league. How important has he been to Nebraska's success? Well, just his speed. I mean, he's able to really open things up. I mean, he's arguably the fastest player on the field when he's on the field. He's a 10-2 guy in the 100. And if you get him at full stride, 
there's not a safety in this conference that can really run on them. Maybe Ohio State's got mm -hmm. a guy, but mm -hmm. you know there aren't too many that are going to run with Trey Palmer if he gets free. And and we've seen him now get free the last couple of weeks and change football games against Indiana and Rutgers. And Travis Volkolek being a huge addition, he got a little nicked up towards the end of that game, but he was so important against the Rutgers in the win against the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, just having his reliability um, and, and the safety valve he brings over the middle. You know, he has a nagging injury that he's played through and got himself back on, and I finally felt like that was the guy we saw maybe in Ireland mm -hmm. when he looked mm -hmm. incredible in that season opener. Especially that first half, right? And if they're going to have a chance – in West Lafayette. He's going to have to have a nice game. Yeah, and before we wrap this up, kind of a unique storyline with Tommy Hill. Mickey Joseph was asked about it, and would there be a chance for him to slide back to defense because of the injuries, and, and what did he say about that? No, uh, Tommy Hill's rolling as a receiver. I mean, that, that is, uh, I mean, this is a guy that Travis Fisher in August, when we could talk to the assistant, said that Tommy Hill's got the potential that his name could be on the on the building someday. Right. And now, now he's as a receiver, so unless he's Charles Woodson, <laughs> I don't know if his name's going to be on the building any day because he's a receiver at this point. And um, I, we didn't see him play as a receiver. He did play special teams right. as the kick return guy. But uh, that that is, that is a, I mean, of all the twists, Brandon Moore, who they call Bam, by yeah, the way. Bam Moore, yeah. And Malcolm Hardstock starting at corner. And Tommy Hill, whose name was said to be on the building someday, is now playing receiver and not playing at all. Well, one of the things with Hill, though, he does have breakaway speed. And if you get him on, if you get him loose, him and Palmer can really stretch the field. But we shall see as we move forward. It's Purdue. It's Nebraska. It's a 630 start. It's in front of a sellout crowd at Ross-Aid Stadium in West Lafayette. and will be televised on the Big Ten Network.